Greetings class and welcome to week 12. This is CIS 4710 and we are going to be looking at wireless security this week and we're going to be focusing primarily on 802.x uh, wireless security uh, protocols and parameters and settings and configurations etc. So uh, with this we're going to look at Wi-Fi networks, what the different Wi-Fi network um, nomenclatures are, the Wi-Fi security um, configurations, and also look at different types of Wi-Fi attacks. So what is Wi-Fi? Our wireless fidelity, uh, which is it is short for, is an application of the Ethernet protocol using radio as its physical medium. It uses um, carrier sense, uh, multiple access with collision avoidance, very similarly to how the old token ring used that for collision uh, avoidance and collision control, as well as media access onto the radio signal. We're currently looking at two different sets of radio frequencies, the 2.4 gigahertz range and the 5 gigahertz range. A um, commonality of these um, for test questions would be which one is uh, faster versus which one has longer range. The 2.4 gigahertz has longer range. Um, it basically works uh, point to point uh, to an access point. The 5 gigahertz works similarly, but since the wave lengths are shorter, it can carry more bandwidth, but it degrades faster and therefore has shorter range. So it makes use of bandwidth out of uh, the uh, IEEE standards and uh, also industrial, scientific, medical uh, band frequencies. <laughs> So there's a lot of terminology and definitions in this chapter. Please look at those in your book. Uh, but a few that we're going to touch upon that you will see again, I can almost promise you on your quizzes and your tests. Uh, service set identifier, your SSID, which is the name of the network. All right. So uh, CPP, for example, is the name of a network. All right. Guest is the name of a network. That is your service set identifier. Then you have your base service set identifier or your BSSID. And this is a specific identifier that points within the SSID to a specific device, typically its MAC address. So the BSSID, for those of you who have looked at the um, Lab 4 walkthrough, uh, you'll see that when we attack the access point, we look for its BSSID. When we de-auth the victim, we look for its BSSID. That's the MAC address of the radio of the NIC uh, on the network. An access point is the centralized device that all stations connect through. And you can have one, you can have a multitude of access points. Uh, there are different styles of wireless architecture. The book touches on two, which we'll get to in a second, but in actuality, if you wanted to get into the nitty grittiness of it all, uh, there's four. But for the purposes of this class, we're only going to look at infrastructure and ad hoc. So infrastructure is an access point run uh, through the network and it's controlled uh, by a centralized device. It is basically LWAP, lightweight access points. Um, the controller controls all aspects of clients connecting, radio, signal strength, um, security, clean air functions, etc. Uh, it's the centralized brain. The AP is nothing more than just uh, a radio for connectivity. Ad hoc is where you have no centralized control. So this is similar to what you have at your um, house or your apartment. Um, it's your home. The access points that you buy out of Best Buy or Fry's or order off of Amazon, and you bring them into your house and you install them, connect them up to your internet service provider, those are ad hoc. 
uh, they do not run any type of multiple, um, unless you buy a specific brand, uh, Motorola, which comes to mind. And, but, you know, 98% of them, 99% of them are ad hoc. All right, so now we're gonna get into authentication schema. And authentication schema is how we authenticate devices onto the wireless network. With that, we are going to delineate between authentication and encryption. So this is a very common misconception that um, you know layman's have that the password that you put into your wireless network is for authentication and encryption. Well, kind of, sort of. Um, its primary purpose is for authentication, to authenticate you onto the network. And um, WEP is an older style uh, mechanism that also incorporated encryption it's very old, but it passes its key in the clear. And that key can be sniffed, and that key can be seen in a Wireshark uh, PCAP file that you collect, and you can then gain access onto the network extremely easily. So it's not very uh, widely used anymore. Most manufacturers don't even incorporate it into their um, hardware. Wi-Fi Protected Access, or WPA, has three standards now. Uh, it was primarily developed to replace WEP. It uses a different pre-shared key mechanism that WEP did not have. Therefore, it can pass the hash um, through a, a protocol very similar to Ike, Internet Key Exchange, uh, to keep the password protected. It fixes the issues of initialization vector that that password sharing with web. And it indu introduced a message integrity check or MIC to prevent replay attacks. So you just can't collect that data and then replay it back to the access point to gain access onto the access point. It randomizes it um, through the hashing process. And then there's Wi-Fi protected access version two and version three. Uh, these were replaced to replace each other, version one and version two, respectfully. WPA2 uh, had a counter mode cipher, uh, cipher block uh, chaining uh, MAC, message authentication code. And its protocol, uh, the CCMP protocol, is an AES based encryption mechanism. So it piggies, piggybacks AES on top of its authentication parameter, which makes it a really, really, really strong. Not impossible to crack, but really, really, really strong. The strength of WPA2 is in its key length and key space, uh, just like with any type of password. So the algorithm that is used is more complex and therefore it is harder, yet not impossible, to crack. WPA3 no longer uses a pre-shared key. Instead, it uses a simultaneous authentication of equals, all right, which is kind of like a key. Uh, to join a WPA um, network, it increases its encryption key length and makes the encryption stronger. And it leverages typically the five gigahertz range to make up for the slowness of the stronger encryption standard. So there are two types of authentication incorporation into, into any PA, PA one, two, or three, and that's personal or enterprise. So uh, lab four walks you through how to crack a WPA personal network. And it talks about um, the simplicity of the authentication key and the reversing of the WPA four-way handshake via deauthentication of a victim. WPA2 is stronger because it has better encryption and higher key standards. WPA3 
even more so. Um, but let's step back a second. So that's on the personal side. So where we have a pre-shared key, we give that key to whoever needs to access the network. Great, it's crackable. Enterprise deployments use multi-factor authentication, or I would say dual-factor authentication, where they have you have to have a username and password, and that username and password has to be checked on some sort of backend system, such as a LDAP or an Active Directory structure. Uh, it could be a flat database uh, on a Radius server or TACAC server. That's fine, but it's still going to um, have that dual authentication. WPA2, WPA3 Enterprise also allows you to do multi-factor authentication where you have those username and passwords, and then you have to have a third mechanism, like a Google Authenticator or RSA key in order to just to authenticate onto the network. Encryption again happens after authentication. All right, then we talk a little bit about WPS, Wi-Fi Protected Setup. I absolutely despise this. This is such a huge joke. It, um, it has, it's no longer used in the industry, or at least it should not be used in the industry. Uh, it's a way of configuring stations without using a pre-shared key, but it uses a eight to 10 digit pin, which is numeric only, which is highly malleable and easy to crack. The stations can be configured in three different ways. With that pin, a push button, which sets up a pin for you um, and lets you pair to it, which anybody can sniff because it's done in the clear. Uh, a near field communication can also be used between access point and station. This is more like an RFID. It's a little bit more secure because it's very, very, very short range. And since, it, since it is short range, somebody has to be in a very general proximity as an attacker. And then you have a USB stick, which is uh, optional, but deprecated for a lot of devices because it's well really easy to copy a USB stick. So WPS has a lot of flaws uh, in its um, deployment mechanism and schema. So we'll talk a little bit about Wi-Fi attacks, and you're going to see some of these in Lab 4. Uh, you have deauthentication attacks, a spoof deauthentication message to stations, basically tells them to, hey, you got to leave the network really fast just for a little bit, uh, goodbye. Uh, it forces them to then reauthenticate and then watch is the keying happen as they reauthenticate, and then they can um, collect information like that. WPA four-way handshake. A replay attack is um, where we basically replay information to a, to an access point, but these have mostly been mitigated by message integrity checks uh, at the MAC. Then there are key attacks, and WEP is definitely vulnerable to this. If enough encrypted messages can be collected, the key can then be reversed very easily. So in summary here for wireless, remember that Wi-Fi is a wireless networking protocol. It stands for wireless fidelity. It works off of two um, radio frequency ranges, 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. Uh, remember that one is faster, one is stronger for greater distance. Wi-Fi uses service set identifiers to identify networks and BSSIDs to identify access points and in stations, network interface cards. Uh, there are two modes, infrastructure mode and, and ad hoc. Uh, infrastructure mode uses access points where ad hoc can be more peer-to-peer. -peer. And WEP is the first encryption mechanism for Wi-Fi, but it sucks. Don't ever use it. Use wireless uh, uh, WPA, wireless protected access, and the newer version, the better. WPA has been out for just a little bit over a year now. Uh, maybe two, and it is uh, in really, really, really uh, good shape. They have found some flaws with it, but they've corrected those very quickly. All right, uh, here we go. WPA replaces WEP, WPA2 replaces WPA, WPA3 replaces WPA2. WPA2 and 3 have stronger encryption and protections for authentication. 
uh, personal uses of pre-shared keys, um, and then enterprises uses usernames and passwords. You can incorporate multi-factor authentication with an enterprise. Enterprise basically leverages uh, Radius or TACAX for the authentication uh, protections against a LDAP or Active Directory back end. Radius and TACAX can also help in the prevention of rogue access points. Uh, Wi-Fi protective setup makes setup easier without sharing the pre-shared key, but it has several flaws and you have to be careful of them. Okay, so uh, we're not gonna have any assignment. That kind of wraps up uh, week 12. Uh, you have a quiz this week. Oops, wrong browser. So I'm sorry, excuse me, wrong class. We have <laughs> homework seven that is due uh, this week. And that is just basically a pretty simple uh, OWASP scan, OpenVOSP scan uh, of a Vuln hub uh, server that you download, that you find and download. Uh, the um, explanation is pretty straightforward uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the assignment sheet. Uh, just go to Vuln hub, download your um, system, and then uh, start attacking it after you get it incorporated into your VM structure. So that's gonna wrap it up for, for week 12. Thanks a whole lot. This is Professor Brown, and we'll talk to you next time.